blade and quill. Hello and welcome. This is video number two of a series on Krita. In video number one, I showed you how to create a new canvas and today I am going to give you a quick tour of the interface and then I'll focus on the toolbar. Krita was a design with one purpose, to be as user-friendly as possible. Just like Photoshop or Corel Painter, the interface is divided into main areas or sections. At the very top is the toolbar. On the left is the toolbox. At the bottom is the status bar. On the right are all your floating docks. And finally in the middle is your canvas. Let's look at the toolbar. To demonstrate, I'll use a brush and uh, let's uh, select uh, the airbrush soft. Your brushes are located at the bottom right of your screen right here. And uh, don't worry about that area just yet, uh, we'll talk about it later. As you can see, we have three different sliders. One for flow, one for opacity, and one for size. You can change the values of your sliders by using your mouse. You can also enter a value uh, by typing directly and press enter. Or you can use the brackets on your keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. Opacity controls the denseness of your paint uh, the more you decrease the opacity, the more transparent uh, your paint strokes uh, will be. So as you can see here, we have 100% opacity. If I was to type 50% right here, my paint will become a little more transparent. And if I had 10%, uh, it will become almost invisible. Uh, flow controls the speed at which paint is laid down by the brush. Uh, imagine painting with a spray paint can. The harder you push down on the spray nozzles, the more coating you get, if that makes any sense. Uh, so when your brush flow is set too low, it's like your paintbrush is light and fluffy. And when the flow is set at 100%, it's like you emptied a bucket of paint on your canvas. It's very dense and uh, heavy. So let me show you. Here your flow is at 100% and the flow is very nice and heavy. But if I typed 10% uh, right here, you would see that it is much, much less dense. This is 10% flow and this is a 10% opacity. As you can see, opacity is really about transparency as the flow is really about the amount of paint that your brush is laying down on the canvas. These two buttons are similar to the uh, symmetry tools in Photoshop. In Krita, they are called the horizontal and the vertical mirror tools. You can turn them on at any time when you are painting. You can turn on one at a time or both at the same time. As the name suggests, when these buttons are activated, they mirror perfectly uh, every strokes you make on one side to the other side. Let's look at the last buttons on the toolbar. As you will see, most of them are self-explanatory. Also, you will see familiar icons like these three. I am sure you recognize the uh, Create, Open and Save buttons. Just like Photoshop, you are able to create or organize gradients and patterns. The two squares that you see represent the foreground and the background. 
you can easily switch between the two using the X key on your keyboard. Next to it is where you will find all your brushes. They are organized using tags. You have a tag for digital, erasers, special effects, ink, etc, etc. You can create, rename or erase a tag. You can change the way you view the brushes. Do you want to see them as a thumbnail or do you want to see the details? You can also increase the size or decrease the size of your icons. You can uh, grab your eraser by using the shortcut key E on your keyboard. And to get back to your brush, click on the letter E again. Or of course, you can uh, click here and get your eraser. You have also some special erasers right here in this area. Now, the thing you need to know about uh, Krita's uh, eraser is that it mimics the uh, configuration and the size of the brush that you have at end. So for instance, here I have a basic circle with a size of 50 pixels. And as soon as I click on the eraser, it will keep the size and the configuration of the brush. Reload the original preset is used when you want to go to the original preset of a brush. You may have made changes to your brush going to this area here. For instance, you change maybe the softness of your brush or the sharpness of your brush. You can go back to the original settings by clicking this button here or this button here. We are done with the toolbar in the next video. I'll show you everything you need to know about the toolbox. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment area. I will be more than happy to assist you. So have a great day and a great week. And until next time, create some great art. Bye.